Okay. Uh, yeah. I'd like to call the uh, September 17th Warminster Township Board of Supervisors meeting to order. Uh, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to uh, have a moment of silence for all our dedicated citizens and servicemen serving all over the world. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so uh, announcements. Uh, I'd just like to remind everyone, you can send your public comment uh, to public comment at warminsterpa.org. Um, and, um, we recognize these are uh, tough times. We want everyone to be heard. We're not trying to um, stop that. And uh, we're actually making um, some headway into uh, some uh, alternatives for next meeting so people can uh, be seen as well as heard. So uh, we'll, we'll announce that as we, um, as the IT people continue to work on that. And um, uh, one other announcement from me, if I may, um, there are uh, lawn signs um, supporting the Warminster Police. Uh, right now, you can pick them up at the uh, at, at the tax collector's office. Bobby Loftus has them. Uh, they're twenty dollars for the sign, and um, the proceeds go to support the uh, Warminster Township Canine Unit, I believe. So, uh, anyone that uh, is looking to uh, uh, show their support for our police department, um, you can get a lawn sign at the tax collector's office. And that's all I have right now. And I guess I'll turn it over to um, Kathy. You're still with you, Kathy. You hear me now? Okay. Uh, regarding the census uh, that, that's being going on going on right now, please. You know, fill out the census forms if you haven't done so already. There are folks that are coming around to the neighborhoods. They have federal badges, bags and all of the identification. They have wear a mask. They stand back from the door. But by doing the census through the federal government, that determines what funding we get for our state programs. So it's very important that people uh, please cooperate with doing the census. We only have a couple more weeks to go with that. Second announcement, uh, Pat Boyle sent me, it's on behalf of the William Tennant Alumni Association. They canceled the Veterans Day ceremony scheduled for November 11th. Uh, and the new honorees for the Alumni Association will be added to the Veterans Wall through the year and to the website. All 2020 honorees will be celebrated at the November 11th, 2021 ceremony. Thank you for your understanding, the William Tennant Alumni Association. The only other announcement I have, Mr. Chair, is a personal one. I would like to um, thank all of our staff and uh, residents for their kindness for the past seven months. Our family has gone through a lot of loss and tribulations. Uh, my mom passed away in February. I lost another brother in July following a heart transplant. And then my husband, Bob, just had cancer surgery. So I thank you for all the kindness, thoughts, and prayers. That's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kathy. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, Judy, any uh, announcements? Yeah, I want to announce uh, something for the Ben Wilson Center, the Ben Wilson Senior Activity Center. They have said they're in need and uh, very much in need of money. They rely on five main sources of income, and most of them have been taken away due to the pandemic and uh, fundraisers, hall rentals, trips, memberships, all been either cut out completely or partially. So they're asking people to go to their website and um, donate, click on the donut, donate button for uh, www.bwsac.org, the Bed Wilson Activity Center. I also wanna remind people that we still have signs in the lobby for push out the pusher 
if people would like one for their neighborhood because uh, the drug pandemic is an ongoing one. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Judy. <clears throat> I remind everyone to uh, mute their microphones when they're not um, when they're not speaking, so uh, to avoid all the feedback. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, Mr. McKee, Mark, what do you have to say? Mr. Chairman, I want to dovetail on what you had talked about with the police signs. I want to send a special thank you to Paul Dixon and Colleen and Joe Bucci. They, they spearheaded this, and they've been selling these signs for several months now. And our friend Joe Cowie lets them set up shop in front of the uh, shop right from 10 to 12 every Sunday morning. And they're there selling the signs as well. They're doing a tremendous job. In fact, they were on Dom Giordano's radio show the other day promoting this. And the, the extra residuals that they're raising are going to the Warminster Canine Unit. So normally, typically on Sundays when they've been at ShopRite, they have one of the canines with them, with the officer. So it's, it's really great what they're doing. I want to thank them. Uh, also, I have, I spoke to Darren Meehan today. Uh, they had the virtual Brad Fox 5K last Saturday. And he told me that they had um, 450 registered. They raised enough money to pay for the two scholarships that they annually do, even though they, they normally have a thousand, you know, it, was, it scaled way back and it was virtual this year. In fact, I want to give a holler to Judge Finello. I saw that he did his virtual walk on the North Wildwood Seawall one, one Saturday. I saw it on Facebook, so way to go, Judge. But uh, Darren wanted me to thank everyone who participated in next year. They want to really come back strong with it. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mark. And uh, Yeah, and that's, uh, that's fantastic that um, they were able to uh, fund their scholarships virtually because um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a difficult thing right now. We're in, we're in difficult times, unprecedented times. Um, okay, Mary. Uh, I just wanted to let everybody know about the rubber ducky regatta. Um, it was held as a successful virtual rubber ducky regatta on um, last Tuesday. The day was sunny and cool and the water was low and slow. Um, they're hoping to have this um, aired in early October so everybody gets to see who the winner is. Um, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I guess uh, we move to presentations. Uh, Greg, I don't believe we have any tonight, or do we? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have a presentation from PFM later on in the agenda, but not at this point. Okay, thank you. All right, then with that, we'll move to land matters, uh, land use matters, and um, I believe the... Um, 1020 West Bristol Road welcome sign uh, maintenance and agreements. And I believe that goes to uh, either Scott or Randy, Greg? Yep. Okay. I can talk to it as well. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Either way. That's uh, fine. You, you can speak to it. Okay. Um, previously before you, you did have 1020 West Bristol Road uh, that did grant uh, was granted approval. That's the corner of, uh, of uh, York and Bristol. Um, they do want to put a welcome to Warminster sign on there. So we're very happy that uh, to support that effort. In order to do that, there has to be some uh, paperwork that has to be handled, uh, particularly with a pen, a pen dot uh, with an HOB condition statement and a freestanding maintenance and monitoring agreement. Uh, again, this is just related to that particular sign. So if the board has uh, any particular issues, we're happy to talk about it. Uh, if not, the uh, the approval, uh, the, the uh, motion for approval of both the agreements uh, would be in order. Uh, okay, is, uh, is there a motion? I saw Judy. Motion. Judy. Okay, oh, first. Yes, motion. Is there, is there a second? Second. second. Okay, uh, any uh, questions or comments? I love the signs. Yeah, I think it's fantastic as well. We, we have them, I, I, I think we have them now. This will put them on all, all our corners, right? Or, yep. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Awesome. That's awesome. And I just have a quick comment. I want to thank Nello Ioneri, the property owner. Nello, he, he maintains all those signs around town at no cost to the township. He's a terrific guy. Thank you, Nello. Yes. I agree 100%, Mark. He is a terrific guy. So that's the price is right again. And um, with with that, um, is there any comment from the public, Greg? There is no public comment. Okay. So with that, let's call the vote. I'll do it one at a time. Uh, Mr. McKee? I'm an aye. Uh, Mary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Kathy? Aye. 
And the chair votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very much. Uh, fantastic uh, to have that corner um, upgraded. Okay, so we'll move along to uh, public comment. Uh, Greg, we'll pass it on to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we've received a few public comments, which I'll read off. The first is from Joy Capozzi, uh, 530 Penrose Lane. Good evening, everyone. If I'm correct, item 8D and new business on the agenda to consider the approval of intermunicipal stormwater agreement refers to the sale of our stormwater system to the WMA. I'm asking you to delay the vote to approve this agreement until such time as the BOS meeting can be open to the public and residents can be made aware of the proposal to sell the township asset. The residents of Warminster have the right to be informed on important decisions so they can make their opinion known and ask appropriate questions. This cannot be done with the current method of conducting meetings. The role of the township supervisor is to represent the township's communal interests. I am asking them that you take the time to listen to the residents before making decisions that affect all of us. At the August 6, 2020 EOS meeting, I commented that we need to start having open meetings again. If the township building is not workable, we need to find another venue. The second comment uh, comes from Darlene Baker. Uh, she starts, Mr. Schuster, so we are good stewards of Warminster taxpayer monies. Please make sure this is read at the Board of Supervisors meeting tonight. I'm so disappointed that we weren't, aren't able to include the spray park due to the bids, not including many local vendors who would do a wonderful job for Warminster. Uh, she then goes on for a, uh, an email which was previously sent uh, about the bid process impact on Warminster Community Park upgrades. We are finally nearing the end of extremely long-awaited upgrades to Warminster Community Park. It is exciting that the required infrastructure requirements along with the new park features, including the splash pad, more sports fields and courts and a pavilion are coming to reality and will be able to be enjoyed by Warminster residents. The process of applying for the RACP and DCNR grants to pay for these upgrades started in 2014 with much persistence much effort and hard work by many staff members, legal teams, engineering teams. I was surprised to learn the bids for the upgrades were significantly higher than the estimates. Upon digging into the results, I was disappointed to learn the closed nature of the bids because of the requirement of the responsible contractor ordinance. While in theory, responsible contractor ordinance sounds like it was a good thing, but when I read through all the requirements, it seems to eliminate local small businesses that provide tremendous support to our Warminster community. While the ordinance has some appropriate elements, section 2C1 through C8 are common sense and logical. Section 2C11 is extremely restrictive and controversial among many municipalities. I did some research and found attached background on these controversial ordinances. She then lists the attachments uh, which have been sent along to you. Grant requirements put on additional headaches and steps for any bidder that likely require higher project management fees. Then to top it off, the fees are also increased because only large union companies can apply to do the work. Many times they may not even have the specific experience, so they load extra fees on top to learn what they need to do. I think the responsible contractor ordinance requirements should be reduced for the long awaited park upgrades so that most planned upgrades can be included, not just a reduced subset of the much needed features. There needs to be guidelines, but they need to be sensible and allow warmness to businesses uh, one of the local businesses that are known high quality, reasonably priced entities, but have been supported in one minister to have the opportunity to fairly compete to contract in their own community. I know this board did not implement the current ordinance and waiving the most stringent requirements for the RACB and DCNR grant bids would likely go a long way to ensuring that local known businesses have the opportunity to participate and reduce the expenditures. Cost effectiveness is always in the minds of local war minister taxpayers and your constituents. I have been an executive in operation for 40 years and know that the small, nimble companies provide much higher quality, more efficient processes, and more cost-effective ways of doing business. We want to make sure our known, high-quality local businesses are able to participate in development processes where they have expertise. I would hate to think, after all this time, the amount of planned fields in courts would have to be reduced because of costs associated with a restrictive bidding process. Please consider implementing a fair and more inclusionary ordinance for local contractors to do business with Warminster. Thank you for your consideration. The next actual three emails are from Mike Ferris, 948 Cornell Drive. 
First is, why has the 2019 financial audit not been posted? The township website hasn't been completed, will be available anytime soon. The second email is, number one, as a taxpayer, I'd like to commend the Board of Supervisors for striking a deal that's so lopsided in favor of the township that I believe even the author of the book, The Art of the Deal, would be proud. I understand that the WMA Board is appointed by the township supervisors. As a repaying customer of the WMA, I'd like to ask if the supervisors would consider firing the WMA Board members who voted for such a ridiculously horrible deal for the WMA, which is likely going to increase our already high water bills. Two, since the WMA board couldn't answer this question, I thought I asked the supervisors, how did the WMA and the township arrive at the $6 million figure for the sale of the stormwater system? And three, can you share what the plan will be regarding the proceeds from this sale? The next email from Mike Ferris is, why does the township find it necessary to pay the township solicitor to represent the township at a zoning board hearing? Is it the job of the zoning board members who are appointed by the township board of supervisors to represent the interests of the township? The next comment comes from Kenneth Seeger. He writes, I am having major issues with my next door neighbor, Weld Wright Services, 689 Sheldon Drive, Warminster. Um, and he lists off a number of bullet points. Why does the township allow business in a residential neighborhood? Noise nuisance, Ordinance 740, Act 124 PA, Weldwright repairs his truck five feet from my house. I have video evidence. Weldwright leaves his truck running. I have video evidence. Weldwright does not work for customers. I have, or sorry, Weldwright does weld work for customers. I have video evidence. Off Street Parking, Ordinance 762, 27-2204. No commercial vehicle having a gross weight of more than 20,000 pounds and in excess of 18 feet should park. Held right services truck is 25 feet and at least 34,000 pounds. I have evidence of this. No impact home based businesses. Weld right truck is a mobile welding company. Weld right does repairs on his truck business activity. Weld right stores business supplies in a shed. Weld right is not contained in the home but outside of it. Weld right does work for customers outside his home. I have tried going through administrations and license inspections, but they're in denial and refuse to help. The Board of Supervisors and the change in leadership is my only hope. All I ask is that the township enforce their own rules and treat everyone the same. No one should be privileged like Weldwright Services. It's Ken Seeger, 693 Sheldon Drive. The next comment is from Scott Logan um, at 386 Sweetbriar Drive. His comment is, hello, please tell us how the sale of the township stormwater system to the MUA benefits the residents. What costs will be passed on to us, the taxpayers? And how slash why was a decision made at an MUA meeting that was not properly advertised to the residents slash MUA customers? Thank you, Scott. Those are all the comments I have received up to this point. Okay, thank you, Mr. Schuster. Um, I believe, um, first off, the um, WMA meetings are properly advertised. Um, so that's, uh, that's the answer to that. And the benefit is that they are um, much more equipped and capable of, um, of operating and maintaining the stormwater as stormwater becomes more complex as mandated by the federal government. I know Mark talked about unfunded uh, mandates and we've been up against this. We've been ignoring it for quite some time and uh, now it has to be done. Um, they, uh, they treat water, they, they're, they're a pipeline company. They manage and maintain piping. Um, we don't, we, uh, we go out when uh, the roads are flooded and I can attest to that at Davisville and Street Road when there's three feet of water from uh, a heavy rain, uh, only then um, does someone come out and uh, try to maintain that? So, um, you know, other than that, uh, the, there, there are the benefits and um, they are offering us um, some financial, uh, short-term financial relief um, so we can continue to enact our long-term financial plan to bring us back to solvency. So uh, other than that, uh, uh, what was there? What was the last one? The audit, Mar uh, Greg? Mr. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Yeah, Chairman? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. There was a question, a legal question about the zoning hearing board. I can answer that for you. 
Yes, the Zoning Hearing Board is a is appointed by the supervisors, of course, to a staggered term, but they're a, a, they're a semi-autonomous and autonomous, semi-judicial is what I should say, body, and their decisions are their own decisions. Um, they represent, we hope, the best interests of the township, but the township is permitted where it feels necessary to uh, have a have a representative there to make the township's position available uh, or uh, let them know what the township's position is. Because again, they're a semi-judicial body and their decisions um, carry weight. And that's the reason why supervisors historically uh, at their choosing uh, with the manager and what have you decide whether uh, there should be legal representation representing the supervisors at any at any meeting. Some municipalities do it on a routine matter. Some hardly ever do it, but it's always your option to do that. And that's the answer to that question. Thank you. Uh, last thing I believe was the audit. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, unfortunately, the audit has been uh, somewhat delayed. Uh, we had a, a number of circumstances which all came together to uh, give us a perfect storm. Uh, first, we were transitioning away from a long-term accounting firm, which helped us out uh, for a number of years. Uh, that transition uh, really started uh, a couple of years ago, uh, but uh, we ended that relationship at the beginning of 2020. Uh, the second thing that occurred was the departure of our finance director, uh, who took a position in another municipality. And the third thing, of course, was the pandemic. So all three of those things have come together to go ahead and delay uh, the, uh, the, the audit. Uh, we are working very hard on that. We're bringing back the former accountant to help out and put some additional uh, resources towards this. Uh, unfortunately, it's been uh, a little bit like a you know, pulling on one string and unraveling another. Uh, every time we look into the, the uh, numbers and how things are constructed down there, uh, but we're confident that we're going to be able to get the uh, the audit done, um, hopefully within a, a short time frame. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Greg. And um, that's uh, it's unfortunate that this happened, but uh, from what I understand, uh, based on our our meetings. Um, or, or weekly or bi-weekly weekly meetings um, is that uh, we are going to uh, enact and execute um, efficiencies so this uh, won't happen uh, anymore. I, uh, I, I, we, 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 uh, we insisted on that, or actually I insisted on that, and, and um, our staff agreed. So, so we'll, um, we'll take a look at why this happened, how it happened, um, and uh, we'll make sure we enact uh, proper protocols and efficiencies to to ensure it does not happen again. Okay, so I guess we can move on to the consent agenda. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tonight's consent agenda is as follows. Uh, item A is approval of the minutes from the meeting of August 6, 2020. Item B is 440 West Street Road, Warminster Express, release number one from escrow in the amount of $281,584 as recommended by the engineer. Item C is Centennial School District multi-purpose field escrow closeout from legal and engineering escrow in the amount of $2,832.20. Item D is application for payment number two final for the 2020 curb ramp installation contract to NJS Concrete LLC in the amount of $9,838.10 as recommended by the engineer. Item E is approval of resolution 2020-29 appointing the designated township representatives for the Bucks County Tax Collection Committee. I previously mentioned that the finance director had departed. Uh, so this is removing some names from the list and assigning positions and it would have the current finance director as the primary uh, delegate, uh, the township manager as the first alternate, and the budget manager as the third, sorry, second alternate. Uh, item F is approval of a license with the Department of Navy to conduct police training at Shenandoah Woods. Uh, there's no cost for this. This is simply to allow the police to go in there uh, and conduct uh, certain trainings uh, at the vacant structures. Uh, the Navy did insist on having this uh, license in place before we did that. 
Uh, item G is an agreement with World Play Integrated Payments uh, for Five Ponds Merchant Processing Capabilities. It's a credit card processing agreement. Uh, if you recall, the, I believe the last meeting, uh, you approved an agreement for a new point of sale system. Uh, this is, would work hand in hand in that uh, for the credit card processing. And item H is award of bid 2020-6. Uh, this is done through the Bucks County Consortium. Uh, this is our annual bid uh, for winter rock salt. Uh, in the amount of, or sorry, to Morton Salt Incorporated in the amount of $47.75 per ton delivered and $47 per ton undelivered. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Um, so is there a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda? Uh, so moved. Second? Second. Any uh, questions or comments? So, uh, uh, how is the uh, golf course doing? Uh, you've been playing there, Mark? It's back in July, but it's doing terrific. They they tell me they're booked from open to close every day. Solid. That's yeah. that's great. And, and great. I gotta great tell to you, I gotta tell you, I know we, it's not germane to the motion, but I played at Avalon down here last week, and it was beat up. Our golf course it makes you really appreciate how, what a nice job these people do taking care of our golf course. They really, really do. Okay, great. Um, all right, so seeing it, no other questions or comments, we'll uh, call the question. Um, Mr. McKee. You're on mute. Exception of item A, I mean, yes, I wasn't at August meeting, so I can't approve those minutes. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Mary. Aye. Judy. Aye. And Kathy. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Motion carries 5-0 with uh, an extension on section A. All right, we can go on to the finance report. Um, who's uh, going to give us the financial report this month? Uh, the treasurer normally gives the bills list. Do you have that, Mary? Yes, I do. So the supplemental bill list for August 31st, 2020 in the amount of $1,211,279.63. And the bill list dated August 20th, 2020 in the amount of $1,724,547.56 for a total of $2,935,827.19. Thank you very much. Um, so do we need a motion to approve that, Greg, or do we go to the draft financial statement? I need a motion to approve. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the bill list. So motion. Moved, Mr. Chairman. Uh, second. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, anything from the public, Greg? No public comment. Okay. So, uh, we'll call the question, uh, Mary. Aye. Uh, who else is on mute? Judy? Aye. Um, Kathy? Aye. And Mark? Aye. And chair votes aye. Thank you. Motion carries 5 0. All right. The draft August financial statement. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, you do have the draft financial statement in case you have any questions. Uh, as I previously reported, uh, we are seeing a sharp decline. Uh, in revenues due to the pandemic. I uh, previously briefed the board on what that means. Uh, as we approach the end of the year, our finances are tightening quite a bit. Uh, we are looking at uh, additional ways to make sure we don't run out of funds before the end of the year. Uh, we have a number of contingency plans that we can't enact. Uh, we'd rather not to have to, but we do have, are working on those. However, the biggest thing that would give us the short-term relief uh, that uh, would get us through this year and into next year would, of course, be the sale of the stormwater system and the revenue uh, that that produces. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, if you're looking at the numbers, you'll notice that the earned income tax uh, on the, um, the report is actually holding pretty steady. In some cases, has been higher than, uh, than, than the past. Uh, what we believe is happening there is that as people are still employed uh, and are no longer working in Philadelphia, but rather working out of their home, the earned income tax is switching over to Warminster. However, however, um, 
there is very likely going to be a refund of a lot of that money, depending on what happens in the future and how many months they spend at which location. So uh, although the earned income tax looks uh, pretty solid right now, uh, please keep in mind that it could uh, go away uh, when that refund occurs uh, you know, sometime in next year. So I just want to point that out in case you looked at earned income tax, which is a very significant portion of our revenue and thought that we were doing great, that it's uh, a little bit of a, a false number. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, we are, um, uh, we've kind of been anticipating this as well, that um, the third and fourth quarters will was, is when the, um, the, the shortfall in revenues will be reflected because of the pandemic. And, um, you know, we've been uh, working hard, the staff um, and the township manager have been working very hard to uh, come up with these short-term solutions and the long-term solution. Um, we, we walked into um, a buzzsaw here. We were already uh, struggling financially and then, um, you know, and then the pandemic hit, which uh, really, really put a strain on, uh, on our revenue stream. And uh, hopefully we can uh, work our way out of it and uh, things will get better. Um, we can only hope that things get better and uh, businesses come back. So thank you very much. Uh, I don't see any unfinished business. So right. we can move on to new business. Um, uh, Greg, you want to take this first one? Sure. Item A is to consider four requests we have for abatement of penalty and interest on delinquent business privilege tax. The four requests uh, that were submitted was from Camp Rad LLC in the amount of $102, Central Bucks Dental Associates in the amount of $505, O'Neill Nissan Incorporated in the amount of $6,677.82, and the fourth one is the Padcaster LLC in the amount of $633. Um, some of them, in, you can see in their applications, uh, have indicated that uh, there was some uh, some hardship or some inability to pay. Others have indicated that there was some confusion. As you know, um, the federal government, all levels of government, including us, did extend out the income tax deadline. Uh, but this is not income tax. This is business privilege tax. Um, so there was, although some of them had claimed that there was a communication, uh, there has been no communication from Warren Minster ever saying. Uh, that we were going to push out the deadline uh, for these taxes. Um, I certainly sympathize with all of them, and it's at your discretion whether or not uh, you go ahead and, uh, and grant them relief. However, I would recommend uh, against it uh, simply because um, if you were to allow this to occur in the future, you will get a lot more requests um, with every reason under the sun. Um, the fact of the matter is the deadline was not extended. Uh, they missed the deadline, uh, so I believe that it would be the proper thing to do would be treat them the same as any other taxpayer. Uh, of course, it's at your discretion, but just wanted to let you know what my recommendation was. Okay, so um, so what would be uh, the motion here? I believe the motion for each one of the four would be either to approve or deny, unless the solicitors have a, a different. Uh, that would be correct, yeah. It would be whatever motion uh, to make. You would need a second, you would vote. There could be dueling motions potentially, but yeah, you would need to make either of those two motions as Mr. Schuster stated. Okay, so um, do I hear a motion? Motion. To approve or deny? To deny. I, I, I understand their, their plight. I understand what Greg said. But our current financial situation, we can't afford to do that. So I say no, nay. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. And just a clarification, is this a motion on all four? Yes. Okay. And so the solicitors, is that appropriate to do it as a, a group? Uh, it can be done as a group, yes, or okay. it can be taken out. Okay. They can be taken out individually if the motion is made. Yes. Either way. Okay. So, uh, is there any uh, questions or comments? Okay. So, um, as as much as uh, I'll comment here, as much as I sympathize, I understand. Um, 
you know, maybe some confusion. Um, you know, maybe the accountants uh, had some uh, misunderstanding or whatever the situation may be. But the bottom line is that um, I agree with Mr. Schuster and the township can set a precedent. So uh, um, with that, we'll, we'll call the question. Um, uh, Judy? Uh, I, um, voting. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not sure what the, 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 the motion on the floor is to deny. To deny. I, okay, I. Mary? I. Mark? I'm sorry, Mark. Say it again, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kathy? Aye. And chair votes aye. So motion to deny carries uh, 5 0. And, and again, we're, we're, we're very, very sorry. Um, you know, you missed the deadline, but, um, um, you know, this would be a terrible precedent. And I don't believe it's ever occurred um, in Warminster before anyway. So uh, we don't want to start a new precedent. Okay, so uh, no otherwise notice to intend to award the community park bids. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This has been a long time coming, um, and so, uh, it won't be complete, completely over with at this uh, after this motion. Uh, or this has been a long time coming. I'm trying to get some feedback. Can someone? Can, can people mute if they're not talking? This uh, motion. Thank you. Um, so. This is the intent to award the Warminster Community Park bids. Uh, just for the public's knowledge, uh, we have gone out to bid on this previously. The bids came back uh, high. Uh, we decided to rebid, and this is the uh, culmination of that effort. Uh, this is broken up into two projects uh, based on the grants that have been received. Uh, we'll get into a little bit on the awarding of those, uh, those bids. But first, I want to introduce our Park and Recreation Director, uh, Karen Whitney, we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, the value that this brings, the features that are in uh, the recommended recommended uh, action here, uh, and uh, what uh, essentially what everyone's getting for their money. So that uh, Karen can take it away. And essentially, what everyone's getting. For can their you money. can you guys so hear me? Uh, okay, I, I am getting a lot of feedback on my end, so I don't know if you are hearing the same thing, but I just heard that announcement four times. So um, if I am getting a lot of feedback on my end, so I don't know if you are hearing the same thing, but I just heard that announcement four times. So um, if all right, well, why don't we do uh, this? Karen, do you want to try just momentarily logging off and logging back in again? Because I think the issue might be. Uh, your technology there. Well, why don't we do uh, this? Karen, do you want to try just momentarily logging okay. off and logging back in again? Because I think the issue might be uh, your technology there. And while Karen's doing that, I'll just go ahead and fill time. Um, I don't. <laughs> so, just so everyone knows the history of this, uh, the township has applied for several grants. Uh, DCNR was received from the state. We also received a county grant. Um, the RACP grant was also received from the state. Uh, the RACP grant has been repurposed a, a number of times, uh, but finally coming into this uh, configuration. Uh, when Kathy comes back, she'll present on uh, the different features that will be added, the fields, the, uh, the intersection, uh, and all the other uh, details. Uh, one of the things that, uh, one of the choices that had to be made when we received the bids was exactly what we were going to do with the project and what recommendation we're going to make, because we did not um, have the funds to do everything that we wanted. So as you'll see uh, later on, we are going to be recommending um, spending a little bit more money um, to go ahead and I should say a little bit. There's a significant amount of money to be spent uh, to really make this a nice project. However, when you spread out the debt service over the length of time that we will, uh, it really is not a, a huge jump. Uh, in the debt service uh, mill rate. Uh, so we'll go ahead and hopefully Karen will be able to get on in a second here. While we're waiting for Karen, does anyone have any questions? All right. How's that sound, Karen? Much better. 
Thank you. Sorry. Uh, that was me with my <laughs> technology knowledge on this end. Luckily, Larry called me and <laughs> told me what to do. Okay. I, I don't know what's just been said because I was out of the meeting, but um, we presented to you um, some uh, agenda items uh, that were provided to you. And along with that, we also prepared a brief presentation, PowerPoint presentation about what is coming with the WCP project. Um, Amanda, can you pull up that presentation and I'll go through the pieces of it? This on mute, I think. She's on mute. You're on mute, Amanda. Amanda, we can't hear you right now. All right, so who has the presentation to pop up? All right, is that sound working now? Yes. Sound working. Okay, I can't get the file to share because WebEx did a huge update and it won't work now. <laughs> okay, well, Karen, why don't you start talking and I'm going to see if I can share it. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, so that would be basically great. Would, what the, so what the presentation <laughs> consists of is it was a project overview for the Department of Conservation, Natural Resources, and Bucks County Municipal Open Space Grant. And then also the RACP or the Redevelopment Capital Assistance Program grants. And those are the two pieces of money that we've been able to garner together, along with some uh, money from the developers, um, mm -hmm. some money from the sports organizations and community and civic organizations. So basically what it was, was that yet we, yet we, yet we provided you with a map of the project overview that tells you all the different um, things that will be, pro oh, here it is, look at this. Right. Great job, whoever brought that up. <laughs> If you go to the next slide, that would be super. <laughs> Karen, it's on the next slide. I, I can't need, move it, can I? I did. Do you need page two or page three? Page two. Okay, page two is up. No, page one is up. I'm looking at page two. <laughs> just go ahead karen it's fine okay. well okay what you're, what you're seeing is the cover page um but we're looking for the map page can you pull the map page i have the map page up karen it's not showing it Okay. All right. Well, then let's just talk about the different pieces of the project. That's perfectly fine. Technology happens and we'll deal with it. Okay. So there are two, two different sets of grants. Oh, there's the map page. Yay. Okay. So if you look at the map, you can see the DCNR grant items that are proposed are in red. The RACP grant items that are proposed are in blue. And you see also the existing activities and facilities that are currently at Warminster Community Park. Um, the things that we are going to that are proposed the new the proposed new facilities for this park are um, the regulation size soccer field, which is going to be over by the current soccer fields. This is because there are new requirements for the United States Soccer Federation Foundation for field sizes. So we are trying to meet those new requirements. Also adjacent to the, that soccer field are, uh, will be additional parking, expanded parking, including ADA parking. Uh, we're going to be adding trails that cut, cut in through the park, uh, through the soccer fields and then attached to our current trail system. Uh, we're going to be adding perimeter fencing. Uh, finally, we will be getting rid of that chain link fence and we will be putting in a lovely three rail PVC fence that will go fr extend from the entrance to Shenandoah Woods all the way down Bristol Road and then down Newtown Road towards where the pond is. We are also going to be adding uh, new basketball courts with fencing and color coding. If you've been at the park, you've noted that uh, basketball courts in the evenings are absolutely packed there and during lunchtime. 
Uh, so the addition of new basketball courts will be greatly appreciated by everybody who uses them. And we can also possibly start uh, leagues there because we'll have enough field, enough courts to be able to do that. Um, additional lighting is included where we provide safety and security for our park users who leave the park at night and also assist our police department with patrols. Uh, we are looking for greening of the runway, kind of right in the middle of the runway. When you come to the park now and you look straight down the runway, it just looks like one giant it expanse. Um, this green greening of the runway will hopefully uh, create a nice buffer right down the middle and a little shade in the middle of the park. Uh, we are adding hopefully a pavilion with new restrooms at the north end of the park just beyond what we call the crossover trail uh, this will help with lots of different organizations we are always double booking our current pavilions so to be able to have another one will greatly benefit the public and also the we have several large organizations that like um uh let's see the cystic fibrosis group um, that do large events down at the bottom of at that north end of the park, and they will be able to use the pavilion as well. Um, additional items will include the Bristol Road access and entrance. Uh, we are going to open that entrance up at the Hapro and Bristol Road light and bring it all the way into the park, into the center. Uh, we will also have a Veterans Road extension where Veterans Way, now as you come into the park, you kind of run into a fence that will also extend down into the middle of the park. Um, one of the biggest complaints that we have is that we don't have enough parking in this park and we don't have enough parking where some of the amenities are. So um, for people who might be older, uh, it will be greatly beneficial to them to be able to get down to the dog park where they can exercise their dogs. Uh, we also are going to be adding two baseball fields um, and a large multi-purpose field. This multi-purpose field is great for families and nonprofits who might be having events down there. Um, but it won't have any specific sport purpose. Uh, we are also adding additional landscaping just to create um, breaks in the in what you currently see in the park um, and in the runway. And then we'll also be bringing in the site improvements and utilities uh, to address the electric, the water, and the sewer that are needed at the northern end of the park for these activities. Um, so that's kind of like the whole the whole list of all the different benefits will be provided to the public if these two grants are approved. Does anybody have any questions? Karen, I believe we, um, I believe we um, thought it best to have a four rail fence to match uh, the uh, Northampton side. I believe, uh, isn't that That's true, Craig and or, or Greg? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We were just trying to save every penny we could with a three rail fence and to make us a little different from Northampton. Oh, we're already different from Northampton. I <laughs> guarantee that. <laughs> okay. Well, three rail, three rail, if it saves some money was okay. Uh, I, I, that, that's something new that I wasn't aware of, but that's, that works for me. I love the improvements, Karen. Great presentation. Thank you very much. I, yes. I want to give kudos to Kathy McDonough too, because Kathy will be the grant administrator and um, she did a really good job helping me put, pull this all together. Oh, Always does a great job. Great work, Karen. And, um, you know, looking forward to, uh, to all these improvements and hopefully we can um, get some more, uh, uh, apply for some more grants in the future and um, continue to add the, uh, I know there's some things that you were looking for that we couldn't, we couldn't provide. Um, but hopefully we can get them in in the near future. But great. great job. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to add one thing that, as you mentioned, we'll most likely be adding more things over the next couple of years. We did discuss that staff level. Um, the nice thing that we broke out all the alternate bids, we got to see what the prices were for each amenity. So Karen got to evalu evaluate that with our staff. And then we, we met with Greg and discussed, hey, we, we can do this cheaper or rebid it. Um, at a later date. Um, so there are still amenities that will be planned over the next couple of years, just not part of these two grant projects. And I know Karen felt that some of the items were just too expensive at this moment, and it could save the taxpayers dollars if we did it either ourselves in-house or uh, bid that out at a later date. Okay. Thanks, Craig. And I know um, my experience with these types of projects um, and any huge project, you know, this is a you know, $5 million project and, uh, or, or what, or 
or, or a little less. But uh, when you get into these large projects, um, they are phased. They are, they, it's tough to do them all at once. Um, so, um, you know, as we phase things in, um, hopefully we continue to enhance the park. That'll be fantastic. All right, well, thank you very much, Karen. Um, so the recommendation has been included for both the uh, DCNR and RACP grants uh, in your packet. Um, as I said previously, the grants will not cover the total cost of the project. Um, the mill rate in this year, 2020, for debt service had already been increased in anticipation of this project. Um, due to the higher costs of the uh, project, uh, that we're looking at right now, uh, it'll be needed to, to raise a little bit more. Um, we're estimating a millage increase of about 0.77. However, only a fraction of that, only a portion of that is from this pro uh, project. Actually, the majority of it is from uh, a future uh, project, uh, the acquisition of Shenandoah Woods, which we'll talk a little bit about during the next uh, agenda item. Um, so that's what we're looking at in terms of a mill rate increase, approximately uh, 0.77 uh, for those two projects. Uh, in terms of the process, uh, this is all governed by the responsible contractor ordinance. Uh, so there's a very defined process uh, on how to go ahead and award this and review the bits. So the recommendation tonight uh, in uh, accordance with the responsible contractor ordinance uh, is to go ahead and award this to the lowest responsive bidder. Now, the key word there is responsive. That doesn't necessarily mean qualified under the ordinance. Uh, the way the ordinance works is we just, as long as they've responded and given us the information uh, that we need, that's re required in the ordinance, uh, they become responsive. So just because your award to the lowest tonight doesn't mean that'll be the eventual winner of the bid. Uh, once you make the award, we're going to go through the whole vetting process uh, to ensure compliance with the responsible contractor ordinance. And of course, if they're not, they will be removed from the process. Uh, this is all subject to the board making your final award at the October 15th meeting. So this will be coming back. To you. So is there any questions on the process as it relates to the ordinance or are we all set there? Okay. So in, in, in that case, uh, the motions have been laid out uh, in the, the packet. So we'll flip first to the um, DCNR project. And just one quick thing, the project had um, in there uh, the four rail fence. Uh, so that was included in the motion. Uh, you just talked about removing it. If I recall, Craig, the uh, difference in cost to go from four rails to three rails was a savings in the neighborhood of $5,000. Uh, so you certainly can't do that. It's obviously not going to change the mill rate, uh, but if that's what you want to do, I just need to add something to that motion uh, that's been prepared in the packet. Um, is there anyone that um, uh, would uh, not agree with four rail or do they want three rail? I mean, it's $5,000 cost savings, but it doesn't affect the mill rate. Um, anyone um, have any preference as to the amount of rails in the vinyl fence? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I, hey, well, it just came up. So I thought, I, you know, you know, I would let you know that you have the option. Anything's better than these Starlock 13 fences that are there right now. <laughs> Glad to see it going, going away. Greg, I, we, we, I, we, I recommend we keep the four rail. We can always make that as a field change and go back down to three, but then the higher price is already in there. I see the solicitor nodding his head. I'd rather go with a higher number, and we can do a change order if you decide to go down to three. Okay. Okay, that okay. makes sense. That sounds good, Craig. So, so in that case, the motion would be to issue the intent to award for bid 2019-11 for the base bid and alternates 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, and 11, the lowest responsive bidder, B. Blair Corp, unless B. Blair Corp, Corp shall be determined by the township manager to be non-compliant with township ordinances and bidding requirements, in which case the intent to award shall go to Land Tech Enterprises, 
unless land tech enterprises shall be determined by the township manager to be non-compliant with township ordinances and bidding requirements, in which case the attempt to award shall go to Miko Construction Inc., all subject to a final award being issued by the Board of Supervisors. Okay. okay. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Any other questions or comments, Greg, from anyone? There are no public comments. Okay, so uh, with that, let's call the question. Uh, Mark. Mr. Chairman. You, you said yes? Yes, I'm a yes. Okay. Uh, Mary. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Judy. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So a motion carries 5-0. And then the next one would be for the RACP project. And that one had two bidders. So the motion for that would be motion to issue the intent to award for bid 2019-12 for the base bid and alternates 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 16, 18, and 19. The lowest responsive bidder be Blair Corp. Unless Blair shall be determined by the township manager to be non-compliant with township ordinances and bidding requirements, in which case the intent to award shall go to Miko Construction, Inc., all subject to a final award being issued by the Board of Supervisors. Uh, motion. Motion. Second. Second. Okay, any questions or comments? Being none, let's call the question. Um, Mr. McKee. I'm a yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mary. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Judy. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Uh, it's very exciting to see this project getting underway for uh, 25 years. I've watched that. Um, <laughs> always had the hopes that this project would something would well, we could do something about uh, enhancing the, uh, the the wreck. When I moved up here, they were actually testing that uh, as an alternate uh, airfield um, runway for uh, for freight and and other things from Philadelphia. Uh, North Philadelphia Airport. So uh, that didn't occur. So it's nice to see uh, the community benefiting from everything. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. A great job. Welcome. Thank you. And, and, and thanks to uh, to Craig and and all the staff, and and everyone that that participated in uh, making this happen. Uh, fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, we go the. Um, uh, getting this uh, construction constructed is still uh, is, is very much uh, on our minds, and uh, we want to see this sit done as quickly as possible. It's going to add great value to the community. Now we have to talk about paying for it. Um, so we're going to bring in our financial advisors, PFM, and I see Scott Sharon and Zach Willard uh, who are here. Um, they're going to go through the financing, and I'll remind you that the financing is not just uh, for the park project. It is also for the acquisition uh, and uh, cleanup of Shenandoah Woods. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to PFM uh, so they can uh, go over what their thoughts are. And at the end, uh, they will be asking for permission to move forward with an RFP for the financing. Okay, great. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Zach Williard here from PFM. And then also, as Greg said, Scott Shear is on the, on the line. Amanda, can I try to share my screen, see if I have any better luck? Yeah, go ahead. Let me get, try to give you presenter rights. Okay. See if it works. Does everybody, see the, everybody see that handout? Nope. Not yet? Not yet. Okay. You should have presenter rights. You should be able to share your screen now. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, so so let's we'll walk through this handout. It's gonna talk about how we're gonna finance the project. You know, I think we've we've been talking about uh, this for a number of months and going back and forth with Greg and Catherine and in the office, um, you know, trying to figure out the best strategy to move forward. So as Greg just said, you know, this borrowing is not gonna be just for the Warminster Community Park project, it's also for the acquisition and rehab of Shenandoah Woods. Okay, so when we're talking about this, you know, the first bullet point there, it says an eight and a half million dollar 
uh, loan, and that's that's to finance both of the projects. Okay. Um, also, I just heard you know we went through the, the grant process. Now, since these are two different projects, there's kind of two different bullet points here, but they're both important. Um, the redevelopment authority, you know, is going to apply for some grants for the Shenandoah Woods acquisition and rehab. And you've already received some funding for the Warminster Community Park project. And I think we just heard about that. So, you know, so together, you know, you're working on some grant money. But what we're going to do is we're going to try to structure this loan so that as that grant money comes in, you can use it to then pay down, you know, some portion of the loan in the future. Okay, so that's that's an important part of when we bid this out. You know, we want to be able to preserve that opportunity for the township. Okay, as you scroll down this page, what we're talking about doing is similar to how we financed some projects for the township in the past. We're going to do a competitive RFP process to local banks, you know, both in the Bucks County and, and suburban Philly area, but really the state of Pennsylvania. So we're going to send this out to about 30 or 35 banks across the state. We're going to get hopefully get some responses back. And then what we'll do is, you know, just like last few times, we'll put together some summary pages and then we'll report back to you uh, at your next meeting for an approval. So, so we do have a timeline here that we'll show you in, in just a minute. And then if we continue to scroll down, a couple other important notes. Um, we're doing this over a 20-year term. I'm getting some feedback, so maybe if you're not speaking, if you can mute. Good. So we're going to do this over a 20-year term. Again, we're going to try to structure the loan to be prepayable at any time so that you use the ability to pay this down super, you know, if, if that's an option in the future. Okay. Um, we're going to we're going to also structure this and this is another important part to be a drawdown facility and we've discussed this concept in the past with the township the, the reason we're going to do that is you know we don't have all the bids in hand right so the maximum amount of the draw will be eight and a half million if you end up only needing 8.2 million this gives you the ability to only draw on the loan what you need so you don't have to you know you don't get into a, a situation where you over borrowed so that's going to be another piece of the loan. We did we did have success getting a loan like that back in 2017. It did have an 18-month draw period. So we're going to hope for that again. And then, as I said, the ability to prepay early is that last bullet point. So any questions so far? Um, just real quick on this page, this is an interest rate chart. It's, it's a tax-exempt index because we're going to borrow this money on a tax-exempt basis. The main point of this page is to show you that you know, going back to the early 80s, you know, interest rates are at all time lows right now. So as far as the timing of this goes, rates are as good as they've ever been. Um, and, and that's a good situation to be in. The bottom half of this page zooms in more to the last, you know, year and a half. And you can see the lowest point in rate history was just back in August, tax exempt rates. Um, they've come up a little bit a little bit uh, higher since then, but still in great shape. Okay. Real quick, here's a, just a snapshot of your existing debt. Uh, as we talked about, I think before this this note is going to come out of your debt service fund. Greg was mentioning what's already in place there. We'll talk about that in a second, and then you know you have golf course fund and then the liquid fuels loan. So these are different buckets of debt that are currently on the township's books, okay? And this new loan is gonna be structured to be in this blue one here, the debt service bond. Can everybody hear me okay? Because I'm still getting some funny feedback. Yep, yep, no, it's fine, Zach. Okay, so here's, here's kind of the main important page and it's a little small, let me try to zoom in. Okay. So what we're going to go through is we're going to show you what the numbers are we're estimating at right now. They're going to be different, absolutely, once we get the bids back. But this is just to kind of give you an illustrative idea of what it'll look like. But so this box here in the middle with the the, the dotted lines is important. This is what Greg was just referring to. So you know what we have here is the township has let us know that there's about three hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars or one point zero six mills currently available for this project in the debt service fund, okay? 
So that's a good situation to be in. You've already funded a, a big portion of this project. Now, what Greg had mentioned is, and again, this might change slightly depending on how the bids come back, but based on our estimates right now, you're gonna need about another 0.77 mills in order to fully fund this $8.5 million loan, okay? And here is why we're saying that. So when we go down here to the bottom of the page, we're showing that, so here's an $8.5 million drawdown loan. We're assuming a settlement right before Thanksgiving. We'll talk about that in a moment. It's a 20 year loan, okay? The estimated interest rate right now, just based on other bids we've been receiving around the Commonwealth, we have you know a 10 year fixed rate at a 275, and then after that, a maximum rate of 4%. Because this is a 20 year loan, it is very unlikely that we're gonna receive a fixed rate for the life. So what we're doing is structuring it to have a fixed rate for some period of time, and then after that, it will reset at a variable rate. The most important part of the of the bid is to make sure that the maximum cap rate so that you'll never you'll know that the loan will never go higher than the maximum rate is set at some number that's that's affordable and that's how we'll budget going forward so in this scenario we're assuming the maximum rate of this loan will be four percent after that 10-year fixed period okay that was a mouthful but the important point is is to know that when we show you numbers when we come back that we'll assume the worst case scenario, and that's how you can budget, okay? And so this is showing that if we did this loan and you drew it all down right away, that your payments would essentially be about $600,000 a year for the next 20 years. And so that math that Greg went over that I just read above, that's what you'll need in order to fund a loan that has a $600,000 payment. So I'll just pause there again. Do you have any questions about about the numbers so like uh, i said we're going to get sorry go I, ahead. I, I have one question so that that those numbers you're showing us right there that assumes we borrow 8.5 million and then do not pay back as we get the grant money coming through so that that's to pay back 8.5 million um uh, without additional payments so to speak when we get uh the, the grant money is that correct yeah, th that's a very good point. So this is what we would consider, you know, in this situation, this would be the worst case scenario. So it shows you draw all the money, eight and a half million right away. You never use any grant money to pay down the loan and the loan resets at the maximum interest rate after the 10 year period for the remaining life. So this would be, as we said, the worst case scenario for budget purposes. Yeah, good clarification point. Okay, so so again, you know, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this. If, if you authorize us tonight, we're gonna go through issuing this RFP. It's gonna either go out tomorrow or Monday. So here we're gonna move into a timeline page. We scroll down. So here we are tonight, September 17th, authorization to proceed. We'll distribute this loan. We'll give everyone a few weeks. Um, we're gonna get bids back around October 7th. And then what we'll do is we'll put together some summary pages and, and kind of analyze the numbers that we get back so that we can um, you know, send that around to the township. And then in theory on October 15th, uh, that meeting, that's your next regular meeting, we'd be able to actually approve you know, what we would, we would call the winning bid of the bank loan, okay? And then what we have here is you know, in, P in PA, you have to go through a number of kind of hoops and things with the state in order to settle. So it takes about 35 days. So that's how we get to a settlement date of, of just before Thanksgiving. So, so that's the estimated timeline as it stands. The one thing I just want to point out, and I don't say this to worry anybody, but you know, there, there's two things that, that are working against us a little bit right now based on the timing of all this, you know, just how it worked out. Um, one is, you know, in between October 15th and November 19th, there's something going on called the presidential election that we, that we all know is coming. Some banks are worried about that. Other banks are not worried about that. So we'll just have to see how, how they feel with the bid kind of being, you know, because they're going to propose a rate on October 15th that they're going to then have to hold until November 19th. So some people that might worry a little bit, others not so much. Um, the other thing that, that the banks are going to be asking for, you know, we'll have to uh, get Greg and Catherine to help us with this. You know, they're going to want to see the audit now that we're kind of in 
uh, September, October timeframe. Um, and since, you know, we don't have one available, we'll just need to kind of answer their questions as we can and, and make them as comfortable as we can. Um, you know, given, again, given the timing and the proximity to the end of the year and kind of the year in new budget season. So those two things, you know, are, are, are things you just want to say out loud and, you know, hopefully they're not a problem, but um, we'll work through them if they become one. And I think that is it for, this is just a backup debt service schedule. And that's it. So with the authorization tonight, what it does, is it lets the finance team get going. It doesn't, you don't incur any costs by doing this. Uh, we would get all the bids back um, and we would report back to you at your next meeting. I don't know, Scott, if I left anything out, feel free to chime in, but happy yeah, to answer yeah, questions. Just, nope. just one more question. Um, I know the Fed chair uh, yesterday or the day before, I believe I watched him, he said, um, that the, they were going to remain unchanged on their on their rate between banks. Um, so when would be the next uh, meeting of the of the Fed to see what, where rates may go? Is that what you were referring to there? Well, no, I was, I was more referring to um, you know sometimes presidential elections can can move markets around. You know this one's obviously going to be messier than previous ones. So there's some some local banks that are normal bidders are telling us that. Um, you know, that that might be a worry for them. Other ones are saying that they're not. So I just wanted to point out, you know, that that's the timing of this, because I know we had talked about bidding this out earlier this year. A few times things have gotten pushed back, you know, and that's all fine. We don't want to do this until we're ready. Um, but now the timing is such that we're kind of going to be doing this right across the presidential election. Okay, thank you very much. And Greg, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that. No, I'll just reiterate that, um, you know, we, we are using the worst case uh, scenario. So when we talked about the bids earlier, um, what we are uh, using in all of our numbers is actually the highest bidder um, because we don't know how this is going to end up. So we always want to be in a position where the numbers are getting better and not worse. Uh, additionally, through the Bucks County Redevelopment Authority, uh, there have been a couple of grants that have been applied for uh, for Shenandoah Woods uh, for that project. So hopefully we'll be able to get uh, uh, some additional funding there uh, that could help uh, pay down some of this uh, some of this debt. And, and the last thing I'll say is um, I know some people might be uh, thinking, well, with the, the township's financial troubles, why are we doing this uh, right now? Uh, the answer really is uh, that with the debts, with the fund structure that we have, our issues are in the general fund. The debt service fund is healthy, it has an appropriate millage, it has uh, more millage that can be raised there if necessary. Uh, so this has no impact to the general fund on doing these projects. These have been planned for uh, for a long time. The grants have been received. Uh, so the funding of this is something that the township can handle uh, financially. Chairman, um, great. Greg, I believe um, <clears throat> that a lot of our uh, existing debt will be uh, um, eliminated in the near future as well. Uh, that's correct. Uh, we actually, uh, for a township uh, our size, we really don't have a lot of debt. Uh, a good portion of it will uh, be falling off in uh, 2023. Uh, at that point, we can make some decisions on if we want to restructure things, if we want to pay down uh, the debt that we're talking about growing up faster. Uh, but yes, our, the debt load will be incre uh, decreasing um, over the next uh, two or three years. Mr. Chairman? With, with your permission, I just want to reiterate with what the chairman had to say earlier that as we get grant monies in for this project, we will be paying this loan down with those grant monies, just so that the public understands that, that we're not just borrowing $8 million. We're going to be paying this down with grant monies. Yeah, that's, one of the problems more, I, that's why I brought that up, because yeah. <clears throat> that is exactly what's going to happen. We are not going to... Uh, move any funds around. Anything that's dedicated to this, as far as grant money, will go directly to this, this, uh, this loan. You're Correct. absolutely right. Correct. Very good point. Thank you. Feel we have nothing that we have everything to gain by getting these projects done at such a low interest rate, and it's going to not help. It's not going to hurt our debt service, like Mr. McKee and Mr. Hayes said. You know, we're going to be using grant money, so. 
It's going to be helpful for the residents. It's going to be beautified, the township with the Shenandoah Woods. Uh, I'm very excited about it. Thank you. Nice presentation. Thank you. So some, some uh, you know, group of us, Scott, myself, and Ben will be back, uh, assuming you want us to proceed, we'll be back at your October meeting uh, with the results of the RFP. So we'll okay. talk to you then. And, and Mr. Chairman, I do have a motion uh, if you're ready to consider it. Uh, yes, go right ahead. So the suggested motion would be that the Warminster Township Board of Supervisors does hereby authorize the administration to work with PFM Financial Advisors, LLC, as independent financial advisor, Kurt and Hefner, LLP, as note counsel, and the township solicitor to proceed with the RFP for the issuance of general obligation notes in the approximate amount of $8.5 million, the proceeds of which will be used towards the funding of the acquisition and rehabilitation of Shenandoah Woods and the Warminster Community Park Project. Okay, do I have a motion? <clears throat> sure. Second. 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 Okay, uh, any other uh, questions or comments? A anything, uh, Greg, on your end? No public comment. Okay, so again, uh, you know, to, to everyone's point here, this, this board's committed, we are not going to, to take any of this, any of this uh, grant money or any other grant money we get and, and pay for something else. It's going to go directly to uh, paying down this note. Um, so uh, with that, um, I'd like to uh, call the question, uh, Mary. Aye. Uh, Judy. Aye. Mark. Aye. Kathy. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very much. This is uh, this is another uh, uh, moving forward to uh, beautify the the uh, the Warminster. Uh, Area and I think uh, the, the, quite honestly the, um, the the road access on Bristol Road um, that that'll be a great enhancement and uh, allow people access to the park. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's going to be good. I also <laughs> wanted to mention, Karen. Uh, I take my granddaughter to the park, and there's so many people there from other townships that come to Warminster Park because ours is so beautiful. I just wanted you to know those comments. Can, can we charge them? Can we charge them? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we were for profit, maybe, but we are not. <laughs> we are a, a public entity. <laughs> and, and, and also, Mr. Chairman, if I, I could, I do want to thank the board for moving forward with this project. Uh, this has been talked about and worked on for quite some time, not just the Warminster Community Park project, but also the acquisition of Shannon Double Woods. Um, the fact that those two parcels are adjacent to each other, you're really creating something special here not just for Warminster, but also for the region. As although those two parcels are adjacent to each other, they're adjacent to the recreational facilities in Northampton. So we're creating this beautiful quadrant here in our corner of Bucks County. Uh, so I just wanna thank you all for moving forward with this project. I think it's gonna be a great benefit uh, to the residents. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Schuster. And the other thing I'd like to say um, is that myself and, and, and Mary, uh, along with, um, with with Greg and some staff have been in communication with our our uh, senators in Washington and, uh, and and anyone else that we can um, <clears throat> be the squeaky wheel to uh, try to get some relief at, at Shenandoah Woods as well. So uh, we're, we are still we are still working on that. We understand um, um, some of the old concerns, and we are uh, we are in earnest with um, with our with our senators in Washington D.C. To um, to put a little pressure on the uh, Department of Defense and the Navy, so uh, we'll, we'll, we will continue to do that throughout this, um, and hopefully we we get some sort of uh, um, some fruition from that. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll see you next month, everybody. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Zach. Th thanks, Zach. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye, Scott. Take care. Okay, moving along. Uh, now, consider the approval of the uh, Intermunicipal Stormwater Agreement. Uh, Greg? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this has been previewed a little bit by the public comments, uh, but I'll give a, a summation. Um, so we're here to uh, 
formalize an agreement uh, with the Warminster Municipal Authority. Uh, a few years back, we entered discussions with the authority uh, about transferring stormwater responsibilities over to them. Uh, stormwater, as of a few years ago, uh, is now allowed uh, as a uh, function of municipal authorities. Uh, they're allowed to do it. They're also allowed to charge an appropriate fee, just like they would for sewer or for water service. Uh, so those uh, those conversations were fruitful. We actually ironed out a lot of the details about who would be responsible for what. Uh, at one point, uh, they did offer to purchase the stormwater system for us, uh, although we were not really interested in selling it to them at that time. Uh, you know, they kind of sat on the shelf for a couple of years. Um, the board previously sorry, the, the board previous to you uh, had adjusted our ordinances and the charter of the municipal authority uh, to account for them taking over stormwater. So a lot of the legwork has already been done. Uh, the municipal authority has agreed to purchase the stormwater system from us uh, for $6 million. Uh, the terms of the agreement would have up to $1.7 million of an advance payment uh, given to us at a, a mutually agreeable time. And then the balance, uh, would be uh, sent to us, uh, presumably once they have completed their financing. Uh, the agreement uh, is before you, it's been vetted by both our solicitor and the municipal authority solicitor, uh, and it's here for your consideration. Uh, if you approve this, uh, the assets will be transferred over to the authority, as well as the responsibility of maintaining that stormwater system. Uh, the biggest exception to that would be if for any land use developments that come in, uh, our current uh, municipal engineer would handle the stormwater review on that. Uh, but outside of that, uh, it would be uh, the responsibility of the municipal authority. Okay, is there a, <clears throat> excuse me, is there a uh, motion to, uh, to approve the intermunicipal stormwater agreement? I move that we a approve. Second. Second. Okay, I'm sure there's some comments, questions. First, I have a comment. Mr. Go, ahead. go ahead, Mr. McKay. You can Thank go. you. Um, I, in its inception, our, our goal here was to move particularly the MS4 plan, which is an unfunded mandate that we discussed earlier, over to the authority and get it off of our books. I'm not quite sure where this $6 million came into play and how the valuation came about that it's worth $6 million. I don't recall seeing a valuation anywhere. And as, and I'm speaking as a rate payer now to the MUA, I'm, I'm a little concerned about this because that 6 million is gonna get passed on to me, the rate payer. I just don't know how it went from us transferring storm water to putting a $6 million price tag on it. That's gonna be passed along to the rate payers. I understand transferring storm water. I don't have an issue with that. I think Mr. Hayes is correct that they are qualified to, to handle storm water. Uh, that, that, um... PFM had done uh, a high level uh, valuation mark during the, uh, when you decided to um, sell the uh, municipal authority in its entirety. So, uh, so that number was uh, offered to the previous board um, um, well before, uh, and, and uh, well before we took office. And um, what we did is we just revisited this. Um, you know, I understand, I understand what you're saying, but um, I, I think that we should um, receive something for an asset when we when we transfer it, and uh, and again, they're acting, uh, they're they're being uh, good partners. Um, I mean, they do represent. Uh, they they manage the the water distribution and the sewer uh, treatment and everything in this township, and they they uh, they look out for the best for the residents. And um, you know, we uh, they offered us. Uh, some short-term financial uh, relief um, so we can continue to operate the township um, because I'm sure you're aware um, of the uh, inherited um, um, financial distress that we're in right now. So uh, so this has all been uh, been offered before and uh, we decided to uh, revisit it as, as the short-term portion of our long-term plan, Mark. So uh, that's. Uh, I still think that the ratepayers of the MUA should have a say in this, whether they want to play, whether they want to purchase this or not. I mean, is it the ratepayers are going to get a stormwater bill on their fee on their bill, 
I understand that the MS4 project is unfunded and that has to be paid for by us or by the storm by, or by the MUA. I get that. But to get a $6 million price tag in a bill, I think the rate payer should have been made aware of it. Uh, they, they, they were. They were at our meeting uh, um, at the, uh, uh, on Monday. Uh, we, we, everyone spoke to them and um, um, most everyone understood what was going on and, um, and, and uh, most of them agreed with, with, uh, with where we are and what we're trying to do. So, um, you know, like that, that's that all I can say about it is um, this is, um, this is going to help us uh, give us some short term relief so we can enact our long term plan. I mean, we're, we're, we're $20 There's million right dollars in debt. What does that have to do with the MUA delivering water to my home and taking rice water away? As a well, 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 first of all, not only are they going to deliver water to your home and take wastewater away, they're going to manage the stormwater system for us because not only is it just the MS4 uh, mandates with the basins, it's actually, <clears throat> there's a lot of water treatment that's going to come into play here. That, you know, first of all, our sediment loads, we're in violation right now. Uh, because we don't maintain anything and the system's failing. So um, so not only are we going to have to deal with treating the water, we're, it's going to continue, the treatment is going to continue to get more complex. And and that's what they do. So, um, you know, that the, either way, there's going to be um, uh, some sort of um, fee or, or, or service charge to, to the uh, residents. So... Um, uh, they're they're the ones that uh, are going to be able to handle as the stormwater treatment gets more complex and more sophisticated, which it will. Um, they're they're that's what they're in the business of doing. So, uh, with Kathy, go ahead. Yes, I feel the Water Authority is the most equipped uh, organization to take care of our water and sewer. First of all, they are the warmest municipal authority, and they do a darn good job. Not to mention the cost to the residents will be very low and if they were the residents have expressed loud and clear they did not want the sale of the municipal authority so this is just part of our long-term plan to get us out of the debt that we inherited and i feel that it's a good plan with our municipal authority working together with us thank you mr chair any other any other comments well, yeah, I can. I'd like to say that, yeah, we did inherit this. This is a good short-term plan for a long-term result, a long-term solution. But I don't think that the township necessarily is equipped to do some of the work that's going to be required to be done in the future with the sediment ratings and the corrosion and the piping and all of the uh, mandates that are put onto the water system. Um, and it will cost us more money anyway. That and we're not equipped, we'd have to contract all of that out. And we have said loud and clear, the public has said loud and clear that they want the municipal authority to be in charge of our water and they don't want outsiders working on our owning our water or our water systems. So I think this is a good solution. Cheaper than if a conglomerate had bought it. Yes. Yeah, and again, and the key right here is that there's um, the, the stormwater management is going to get much more complex. Um, the township is ill-equipped um, and, and not through, uh, well, uh, we knew this was coming. Mm -hmm. We knew stormwater management was going to be an issue that we knew it 10 years ago. Uh, we chose to ignore the problem uh, or, 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 um, or work towards uh, slowly correcting the problem uh, and uh, and now we're and now and the clock's been ticking for quite some time for years so um you know we, we we need to move forward i disagree with that statement mr chairman over the past 12 years we've completed the whittier basin there's a regional basin that was placed in centennial road eighth and green has been corrected so the stormwater issues of this major ones of the township have been corrected in the past 10 years however this ms4 is something that came about it's an unfunded mandate from the federal government and how long ago did the MS4 come about, Mark? We adopted it, Craig, correct me if I'm wrong, three years ago? Um, I actually don't know the specific date. It might have been longer than that, though. I think it was three to four, maybe, I think it was three years ago, Craig, that that was adopted. But 
that's neither here nor there. It's an unfunded mandate that has to be completed. I, my, right. my point is that major stormwater issues have been addressed in this township in the past 10 years. Oh. That they well, some of them have, but uh, I know uh, our residents continue to send me uh, photos of a lot of flooding issues. So it's it's. It, there's there's a lot of things there's a lot of pieces to that and uh let's face it the uh, municipal authority is well equipped to do that is there any other questions or comments okay seeing none um let's call the question so yeah, we'll mr. Want to continue mr. The approval. mr chairman we do have public comment okay go ahead okay the first one is from joy Capozzi. She writes, it is not right to vote on the sale of an asset without the public being available to comment and converse about it. Conversation is not possible with the email process. Once again, I'm asking you not to vote on the agreement between the BOS and WMA, which was forged behind closed doors and without the input of residents. Not having more information, there is no way we could know how this will financially affect the residents going into the future. In addition, by taking this step, you most likely will have made it impossible to think about selling the WMA, as has been discussed over the past year, and was almost done a done deal until reorganization in January. I personally have nothing against the WMA. I feel they do a good job. However, for me and other residents, the reason to think about that sale is twofold. First, to gain much needed funds for the township to alleviate the debt. Second, to cut our water bill in half back to the cost it used to be and to make certain clean water will be available to us through North Wales into the future since we are under contract with them for a limited time. That is a discussion for another day. For now, you are not acting in the best interest of our residents to vote on this agreement tonight. We, the residents, need to have more information to feel good about this. You should not take this matter into your own hands. Thank you. Joy Capozzi, 530 Penrose Lane. And another comment from uh, Scott Logan, 386 Sweet Briar Drive. I would much rather see incremental appropriate tax increases than sell an asset for a lump sum. I am disappointed that my comment about the WA meeting wasn't properly publicized, was dismissed so quickly by the chairperson. WMA has a website with no mention of a meeting. I had to learn about it from a Facebook group. I wasn't notified by mail. I would like to know how they notify the public. It was via a local newspaper, and that meets the Commonwealth's requirement for proper notice, then fine. But I think the WMA did this intentionally so that more residents didn't come out to object. Our water and sewer bills were already higher than neighboring municipalities due to the pollution from NADC. Now we are giving the WMA another opportunity to go with its customers. It's not right. Okay. Well, any other comment? Okay, so uh, is there a, did we have a motion yet or? No, no, Mr. Chairman, the motion would be to approve the uh, agreement. Okay, is there a motion? I motion, I'll motion to approve the agreement. Second. Okay. Um, it seems we had our comment a little earlier. So with that, we'll, we'll call the question, uh, Judy. Aye. Mary? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Mark? I'm a no, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and uh, I have to abstain. So the motion will carry 3-1-1. Okay, moving on. Authorize the solicitor to represent the Township to Zoning Hearing Board, uh, 606 York Road. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you're aware, the uh, township is a party to all matters before the Zoning Hearing Board. Um, in the case that the township um, does disagree with the application and believe it should be denied, you certainly have the right uh, to send the solicitor in opposition. Um, you know, one of the questions that often comes up is why send the solicitor now because you always have the right to appeal. Uh, one of the main reasons you want to send the solicitor uh, at the hearing is that's the only chance you have to actually build a record. Um, once it goes to the appeals process, there's no more testimony or evidence submitted. Uh, so that's why if there is any uh, time that you feel uh, you should oppose an application, you should do so at the very early stages and uh, not uh, wait for the decision and then handle through. Yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, this is a zoning hearing board application uh, for um, 
606 York Road. Uh, there, this is the SM, what's currently the SMG complex, uh, which is, has gone out of business. Uh, the property owner does want to put indoor storage in there. Uh, it would be indoor storage with still having the front as retail. Um, however, indoor storage is not a permitted use in that area. Uh, so it's up to the board to discuss and decide uh, if they feel they want to oppose this application uh, because indoor storage is not an a, uh, authorized use in that zone. Okay, so is there uh, a motion to authorize the solicitor to represent the township? Uh, I move that we authorize the solicitor to represent the township. Your second? Second? Second. Second. Okay, questions and comments? Can I go first? Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't know if, if the board is aware of who this property owner is. His name is Scott Hamel. He purchased that property several years ago and took it out of bankruptcy. He did the facade, parking lot, lighting, et cetera. He's currently in, in entered into an agreement with the Y to give them the pool next door because they've gone out of business. He had two other um, two other of the uh, commercial businesses in there were going under. This guy is, owns four other commercial properties in Warminster, and I'll name them for you. County Line Shopping Center located at the street in Newtown and County Line which is 12,000, 1,200 square feet. 730 Lewis Drive, 51,000 square feet. 287 Street Road, 8,500 square feet. 315 Street Road, 7,500 square feet. And the complex there is 130,000 square feet. Look, I, I don't, I'm not crazy about that use either, but I don't see why would we, the Board of Supervisors, would send our solicitor in opposition to the application. I think the zoning and hearing board should do their function let them present their case and let the zoning hearing board decide if they want this use or not. I just don't understand why we want to why we want to be proponents for another empty building. And this guy is a very good property owner in this township. Greg, I think you remember we met with him a few years back. He offered us the property on Lewis Drive to use for a township building and was willing to fit it up for us. This guy's a good property owner. I don't understand why, why we would send a solicitor in, in opposition to his application. Let the zoning hearing board do their function. Let them do their function. We, we are letting them do their function, Mark. And my biggest concern is that this is a precedent because this is based, uh, you know, you lost the tenant. Um, and, and we're not, we're not averse down the road to see to, if this has, if this is the only way out, but it is, it's a retail um, mall and um, that's the way it's zoned. So we, we would like to see uh, something else in there. And if that's not, uh, and if that doesn't happen, and that's that's no good. Then uh, we can revisit this. And as of right now, if you set a precedent that um, that anytime someone has uh, loses a tenant, and they want to they want to uh, ask for relief because they lost a tenant. That's a precedent, that, and everybody is going to go to the zoning board and ask for this. We just don't think you know there's a zoning. The, the ordinances are there for a reason, and right now it's zoned for retail. Retail, and and um, you know this, that's my only concern, Mark, is that we're okay. setting a precedent. Well, I, I disagree with sending a solicitor in opposition, not to mention the taxpayer's got to pick up the tab. I, I disagree. But that's, you know, that's up to the majority of the board. I understand it. I respect it. Thank you. You're on mute, Kathy. With Mr. Hayes, because we can't just give, give businesses variances. Uh, he is a great uh, businessman in his township. We respect all the <coughs> that he's putting in Warminster. But like Mr. Hayes said, if you lose a tenant, you can't just have a change in the variance with a set of precedents like that would not be a good thing in Warminster. That's why I agree with Mr. Hayes. And again, um, if, if this is the only way, yeah, we don't want to see anyone fail. This is that's a completely uh, a, a untrue statement. If anyone's going to try to throw that out there. But what we're saying is that, um, you know, we understand that the pan pandemic has caused a lot of businesses. Um, a lot of businesses are going to go out of business. This is going to be a tough time for commercial real estate as uh, as, as uh, offices contract, realizing that they don't uh, um, need all this office space. Um, but we wanted to give it uh, a little bit of time to see if there was something else that could move in there that was more in line with the zoning. 
I agree. So, okay. Any other comments? Mr. Schuster, any other comments? Uh, there's no public comment. No more public okay. comment. So with that, let's call the question. I believe, uh, was there a motion made? Uh, I yeah, thought I so. Made the motion. Mm -hmm. I'm so and sorry. And Kathy seconded it, I believe. Okay, the motion was to uh, approve sending the solicitor to the zoning board. Um, in opposition. In opposition, yes. At this time. And the zoning board uh, may choose to uh, ignore our solicitor remarks. So uh, we, we don't know the outcome of that. But what we're saying is that there's a precedent here. And we would like to uh, um, not set precedents. Um, that's all. So uh, with that, let's call the question. Um, Mary? Aye. Uh, Mark? No. Oh. Kathy? You're on mute. Aye. Judy? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Motion carries 4-1. And, um, <clears throat> you know, in the, in the, um, in the event that, um, our, this, this business owner, this property owner, uh, really is struggling. Uh, we'll, we'll give him the, maybe we'll give him an opportunity to come in and speak with us uh, and show us what the plans really are. Um, but at this point, we don't want to set precedent. So thank you. Uh, all right, let's move on to professional reports. So, um, Mr. Schuster. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you all have my uh, written report in case there are any questions. Uh, a continued thank you to everyone that's doing their part uh, throughout this pandemic. Uh, we continue to see a relatively low number of cases and hospitalizations in Bucks County. So people are taking the precautions seriously. Uh, I don't want to you know, keep, uh, keep uh, encouraging uh, residents uh, to follow all those protocols because it, it is working. I um, want to thank Joe Cowie and ShopRite for their Help Bag Hunger event. I was a guest bagger there, as well as a few of our lieutenants. Uh, the judge was there as well, and I think a few other public officials uh, stopped by. Uh, uh, District Attorney Weintraub was there. Uh, I'm sure others stopped by. I just didn't see him while I was there. Um, I, did, uh, I don't think the board has to worry about me having a second career as a bagger. I uh, did not do very well. Uh, I was correct. It was, it was a senior discount day, and I was corrected a few times on how to properly bag uh, groceries. Um, but I want to do thank him uh, for holding that event uh, to raise money uh, for those in need. Uh, I also want to welcome uh, the new superintendent of schools, Dr. Bedden. Uh, I was able to go over to the uh, Centennial School District offices with a uh, chief and a couple others to uh, uh, meet him and have an initial discussion. Uh, of course, he's got his hands full uh, with everything that's going on in any school district, uh, but I did welcome him to Morminster and uh, look forward to having a good relationship with him. Uh, and lastly, as I've notified the board, uh, we have received the SAFER grant. Uh, this is approximately $1.7 million grant uh, for the hiring of career firefighters. Uh, so I do want to thank the board for their support in that endeavor. Um, and I also want to especially thank uh, the two fire companies, the Hartsville Fire Company and the Warm, uh, Warminster Fire Company. Uh, we're walking into a situation here uh, where although we're hiring uh, for the first time ever firefighters, uh, that all the infrastructure is in place. Uh, we have good processes and procedures. We have good stations. We have good equipment. And all of that is because we have two great fire companies that have built this over decades. Uh, in other communities, you might be starting from scratch and building, you know, putting up new buildings and uh, buying fire trucks. We're not doing any of that. Uh, it's just gonna be hiring of these firefighters and using the existing great infrastructure that those two fire companies have put together. So just wanna uh, congratulate the, the board for, for getting that grant award and uh, we're looking forward to uh, the results. Thank you, Mr. Schuster. Um, so let's report. Mr. Chairman, I have a few things for, for the township manager. Um, number one, I want to thank you okay. for putting a process in place to oversee particularly finance. I, I just find it very disturbing that we can't close out our 2019 audit because some, some things have gone haywire down the, down the, uh, the hallway. And I, I think it's an excellent idea to put some further controls in place. 
Um, I also, I get the township manager's update every Friday and there's a lot of discussion about a finance subcommittee, but not, not a whole lot about what's being discussed by the committee. Can we touch on that? Can we get a report from the, and first can you tell me who the, sub, the subcommittee is? Uh, so the subcommittee really consists of uh, uh, the chairman, the treasurer, uh, myself, uh, and Catherine McGovern. Uh, occasionally, others are brought in as we need uh, other other opinions or other help in areas. And what and what's being discussed? Are there minutes being taken at these meetings? Uh, I'm not quite sure what the function of the committee is. Sure. So there are no minutes from the meeting. It's not required. They're not official uh, meetings that uh, require agendas and, uh, and minutes. Um, it's a discussion on our short and long term financial situation. It started in the beginning with almost looking at a, a whole bunch of different options and different paths that we can go on and just basically honing that down and figuring out what direction we're going to go. What are we going to explore? Because some of these concepts do take a, a lot of exploring. Uh, so that's basically the process we've been going through. Uh, happy to brief you or any other uh, board member at any time on things that are discussed. Well, I'd like to brief the public. Uh, it's up to the board how they want to handle that. Sure, we can brief the public. So what, what we're doing is we're trying to uh, sort out the train wreck that we inherited as far as the financial situation. Um, you know, we're looking at all the different all the different avenues for a long term financial plan, Mark. Um, you know, we're looking at how we're going to deal with the 20 million dollars in pension obligations that we haven't funded for over uh, what eight to 10 years or however long it's been. Um, we're, we're looking at how we're going to um, control costs and reduce costs as we move forward, um, because, uh, you know, that that's that's quite a large sum of money that we're going to need to. Uh, to deal with and it's and and uh we're looking at um how to manage the township uh, the, the finances in the township and i am very disappointed as well i agree with you uh, i just heard about the audit and the things we've uh, i am very disappointed in, in that as well uh, because that's a critical part of what we need to do to move forward um you know um anybody can call me at any time uh, on the board um uh, you know, I've I've reached out to you a few times, and uh, just to give you an, uh, a little uh, update on what we're doing and where we're going. Um, you know, we haven't connected, but uh, you can call me anytime. And, and as uh, Mary and 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 Kathy and Judy, well, Mary's on this subcommittee, but as Kathy and Judy do, uh, I'll update you anytime you like. There's nothing. There's nothing going on behind closed doors. Um, you know, we 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 are more engaged, uh, unlike other boards. Um, we've decided to engage ourselves in in the township rather than take a back seat um, and um, and and provide some uh, some leadership. So uh, that's that's what's going on. And I'll be happy to brief you every week. Every time we have a meeting, I'd be happy to brief you. Uh, but that's what we're doing right now. We're trying to uh, dig out of the uh, of the uh, giant hole that we're in and um, and come up with a long term solvent financial plan. So, I mean, that's, and that's our discussions and we bring in some professionals, um, you know, and uh, uh, we don't have, uh, we're not, we're not doing anything. Uh, we're not making any, de any decisions. We're, we're, we're trying to find the best uh, path forward to financial solvency. That's what we're doing. And, and we meet extensively and it takes a lot of, uh, of my time and Mary's time along with our staff. Uh, you know, and I'm grateful they're doing a fantastic job. So, uh, and that's where we are. We're, we're, we'll, we'll introduce this um, in, the, in the very near future. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll discuss anything you want to know. I'd just like to mention to Greg, um, I'm, you know, I think we're all very upset with the, the audit situation. I'm glad that, you know, uh, we're, we're moving forward to try to, to correct the situation. Also, I'm very, very happy that the our firemen got the safer grants, the talks that Ken and I had with them. They were willing to work with us. Uh, and I'm very, very happy that we're finally able to do that in this township. And uh, and also, also what Mr. Hayes said, we are very transparent. Anybody wants to ask any of us anything, we will answer. Thank you. And we're very cognizant of sunshine laws. Um, we're not trying to do anything in the back room as uh, as uh, as i saw um 
posted recently. There's nothing going on. This is all what this really is, is that the this board of supervisors chose to be much more engaged in the uh, in the actual uh, township and and try to um, formulate a future, a vision for this township. So uh, that's what we're doing right now. OK, um, any other questions for uh, for Greg? OK, I believe that we move to the solicitors. Yeah, um, you've got a report. Um, if anyone has any questions, we Greg's been keeping us and uh, busy with all backing up all the various agreements that you've approved tonight. And on a personal note, I would just urge everyone we had it yesterday in our office. We had flu shot day in our office. Everyone, the whole office, their families, their friends, etc., got flu shots. I'm just reminding everyone to get a flu shot so that we don't have a double pandemic this winter. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Flagger. Mark, you have something to uh, yeah, Ray, Ray, what, what were you eating earlier? I saw. I didn't have dinner yet. <laughs> well, if you must know, I just sampled my brisket. It was amazing. Uh, if you were over me. here now, really, you would kill your mother for this brisket. Oh, it's that good. Me. Yeah, it was that good. As, as my stomach it simmered, <laughs> it simmered for six hours. Okay, uh, it was amazing. All right, well, I won't hit you with any other questions. I'll let you get to that. I hope you're pairing. <laughs> I haven't eaten either. <laughs> I'm saving it for the weekend. I'd like to just say something about the flu shot. You know, I'm glad you got it, Randy. But I talked to my doctor and I talked to the Rite Aid pharmacist, and they both said that you should try not to get the flu shot until mid to late October because it's going to be a long flu season and it may not last in its efficacy period for the pre-season. So, I'm not going to argue that, Sam. It should last for at least six months, and you could always it get happens. another one, I guess. The point was, yeah, yeah. I needed to have herd immunity in my office. So far, no one in the office has gotten COVID, and we've, <laughs> and we've, all, we've been tested, um, and we've really, we really needed to, to protect our clients. When people come to our office, right. we need to super, but not only do we wear masks and what have you, but we have to make sure that we're not transmitting anything other than good legal advice to now, our my clients. Announcement, my announcement is just for the people that are watching. You know, that's it. Not for you, Randy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Last but not least, uh, Mr. Kennard. You want me to follow up that? That's great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry and thirsty now. Because yeah, uh, we're all, all very remember. hungry at this point. <laughs> yes. Um, you have our September engineer's report. Uh, I'm going to keep it very short. Uh, there's not many changes. Uh, as you know, tonight you approved of uh, a, a lot of agreements, as the solicitor said. I want to thank my staff personally. They work very hard behind the scenes on the WCP uh, park projects with your staff, and especially Karen uh, and Kathy at Park and Rec. Um, I want to thank Chris Green uh, and also Aaron Van Hock. Uh, they have done a tremendous job supporting the township uh, with that project, as well as Aaron uh, working with your public works department and Eric with the road program. You closed out your road program, uh, and it was another successful program. Uh, it's been several years now since Eric's been there and Aaron's been handling that. Uh, so again, I want to thank everybody. Um, I have no updates as far as land development. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have anything in the pipeline that's significant enough uh, to appear before you in October. Obviously, there's time for something to change, but right now there'll be no land development projects uh, at your October meeting. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Craig. I just have one question for Mr. Right. Leonard. Okay, Kathy. Go right ahead. Um, Craig, do you happen to know when Nifty's 50s are coming in? No, I do not. I think they were delayed. I don't know if Amanda has an update. I haven't seen any official land development plans yet. Okay, thanks. Um, they should be submitted in the next two weeks. Amanda. Okay, second round of public comment. Uh, actually, first, Mr. Chairman, um, my announcement of upcoming agenda items. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, I missed. I, I already circled it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Once I heard there was brisket being uh, uh, eaten, I, I was moving forward quickly. <laughs> I, won't delay any, <laughs> I won't delay anything. Um, it wasn't so, being eaten. It was just being cooked. Okay. It's just, it's just okay. Okay. That's <laughs> I saw you with the napkin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, if there's no objection, uh, we will cancel the October 1st meeting. Uh, because of the timeline that's laid out for the debt financing, uh, we do need to have the October 15th meeting. Uh, so I figured it'd be best to just cancel the October 1st meeting as there's really not enough business to handle in the interim to justify a meeting. Uh, but again, we would meet on October 15th. Uh, on that agenda, you would have a lot of stuff that was talked about this evening. Uh, you'd have the final award of the Warminster Community Park bids, award of the financing for the Warminster Community Park and the Shenandoah Woods. Um, we're also, in relation to Shenandoah Woods, uh, be considering a settlement with the Aldi Foundation uh, to resolve that uh, outstanding litigation. Uh, we would also have an initial discussion on the 2021 budget. And last, uh, and this falls into what uh, the chair was talking about earlier at the subcommittee, uh, one of the things the subcommittee uh, has been looking at uh, for quite some time and is now ready to be brought to the board uh, for an initial discussion uh, would be a pension obligation bond. Uh, so PFM would be here uh, at the October 15th meeting for an initial discussion on that bond. Okay, thank you, Mr. Schuster. Now we can go to public comment. Mr. Chairman, there was only one other public comment. It's from Mike Ferris, 948 Cornell Drive. He writes, I'm just curious, is the township paying for two solicitors tonight or are we getting a two for one deal? We've, we've answered this so many times. You're getting a two for one deal. The township never, ever, uh, our firm's policy is even if we have four attorneys working, on, you only get billed for one attorney. And tonight is no different. You're only getting billed for one attorney. Thank you, Mr. Flagger. We appreciate that. Um, okay, so um, supervisors' comments. Uh, who would like to go first? Oh. I'll go Anyone? first. I'll go. Ready? Oh. Okay. I, I just want to say thank you. I'm glad that some of this stuff has been resolved. I'm so happy to see the Warmest Park issue being resolved. I hope this comes out of a successful bid and a successful loan and um and i think that the uh, uh i i thank the municipal authority for giving us this opportunity to help resolve some of our problems great comments judy um i totally agree with everything you just said uh i'm so happy that we are moving forward on projects that have uh, long since need attention uh, nobody's going to do a better job than our municipal authority. We're saving our water, minimal cost to the residents. Uh, the Shenandoah Woods and the park project, that's going to be uh, great recreation for our residents. We're working, on the financial, working on the financial woes of the township. We're taking uh, initial steps to get there. And I'm very excited uh, to be uh, with our long-term plan. And thank you all who have participated, all our staff, uh, Greg, all our supervisors that have been involved, I think it's, it, that we're going down the right road. <coughs> Everybody have Thanks, a good Mary. day. Okay, Mary. Uh, yeah, I would like to comment. Um, this has been a very good meeting because there's been a lot of positive things with the park, with um, FEMA giving us the safer grant, which is something we've um, really been trying hard to um, get and we're really excited about. I just want to remind everybody that some schools are open virtually and some schools are open with um, students actually going to school. I'm asking everybody to please um, acknowledge all school zones and speed limits that are out there because we still do have um, young children out there on the roads and we really have to be cautious of them. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, hey, Mr. McKay, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I forgot a couple of things during announcements. One of them being October 12th is the annual Park and Rec uh, golf outing. And I know Karen's uh, looking for golfers and sponsors. It's October the 12th. I'm sure I'll be playing with Mr. Kennard, as we normally do. Um, it's, it's a really nice event to sponsor, and, it, and the proceeds go toward the Park and Rec. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, that's about all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, great. That's a, that's a great function. You're right. Um, I saw that, and I forgot to mention that as well. So, yeah, to piggyback on that, uh, please support that. Come out, sponsor uh, sponsor a hall, come out and play. Um, good event, and uh, the proceeds go to a worthwhile cause, which is our Parks and Rec. So, um, you know, and I'd like to uh, also Schuster comment on retirement for that one, too, Mr. Chairman. I'm What's that? Mr. I'm going to try and get Mr. Schuster out of retirement for that one. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mark, you're breaking up. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I might be, I want to, I, I would like to be in the loop right behind him mm -hmm. when you do that. <laughs> don't, don't play best ball with him. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, you know, and I'd like to just say, uh, you know, what uh, reiterate what Mary said that the safer grant, uh, you know, thanks to FEMA and and uh, our um, our fire safety officer and and uh, and, and the township and, and this board, uh, we were able to move forward and uh, and get get some help for our uh, our volunteer firemen um, because one thing um, that we are concerned about and we do take very seriously is the safety of the community. So, um, and with that, remind everyone to continue to be safe. Um, I, I know um, there's a lot of um, misinformation about masks and other things, but continue to do this. Um, be safe. Enjoy uh, enjoy the rest of the week and um, and the following week, and we'll see everyone uh, in October. So, um, with that, a uh, motion to adjourn. Kathy, motion. Are you, yes. Motion, yes. Okay. Right. So, uh, good night, everyone, and uh, good night. be safe. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.